Hi, I'm jumping up a few layers, probably uh, both compared to what you usually see uh, here at NANARG and certainly compared to the other presentations today. I, what we were trying to look at is mechanisms to protect large carrier-scale voice of IP systems I, which can support hundreds of thousands to millions of subscribers. Uh, primarily from denial of service attacks, but also from other attacks like flooding, flooding and spoofing and other things. The basic motivation is that most of the infrastructure that we use today, particularly for voice over IP gateways into the PSDN, are hard to secure because they don't really have the right knowledge to, di to distinguish a legitimate RTP packet, for example, from one which is trying to, say, interrupt an existing conversation. So they all pretty much look the same. And since we don't have SRTP, uh, we need to have other entities in the network to deal with that. So we're dealing with two denial of service threats. We started out by looking at RTP level denial of service threats, and then we are currently looking uh, specifically at SIP level uh, denial of service threats. For uh, the RTP threat, we are primarily concerned to make sure that this large infrastructure, so typically uh, a large number of gateways with uh, tens, hundreds, possibly thousands of trunk circuits, I which is typically just fairly dumb MGCP type gateways, uh, does not receive RTP traffic, which does not have a corresponding session state. Again, the primary concern there is that somebody could essentially session hijack in some way or session destroy by injecting bogus RTP packets or other uh, malformed uh, packets into that cloud uh, itself and traditional port level filtering clearly does not work since uh, RTP can appear on any port uh, across the UDP spectrum. So we need to do something which is essentially a stateful firewall uh, just at a much, much larger scale. Uh, we have used a network processor uh, to do that implementation, which raises its own set of challenges, and we'll get back to that. One of the core issues uh, that goes along with this type of approach is to make sure that there are no uh, voice cutoffs. Uh, in particular, there is a concern that if you have systems which are not fast enough, you might actually do uh, engender clipping where the first parts of the hello when somebody answers is clipped simply because the firewall hasn't quite caught up with a new session yet. And indeed, we found in preliminary experiments that that was a real concern. Uh, at the other level, we also want to make sure that uh, infrastructure is protected immediately after uh, the termination of a session, after the SIP buy, so that you do not have bogus packets kind of having an avenue do after that. So we need to reduce attack traffic. We can relatively easily, in this case, erect a perimeter fence uh, because uh, these are specialized services. This is not a generic internet uh, internet style service. We only expect certain services to be on that network. And there are really uh, essentially three types of services that we have on that, all of which are attack targets. So these are the SIP infrastructure elements themselves, so proxy, soft switches, search and border controllers, all the other uh, myriad of SIP boxes that people sell these days. Uh, endpoints, to some extent, that's primarily true in a uh, corporate environment for SIP phones, but for us, primarily gateways uh, are the major concern in terms of volume. And clearly supporting services, DNS, and all of that. Uh, the last one, we don't worry too much about the existing mechanisms to protect those. So we need to solve a perimeter protection problem, uh, primarily uh, and for these specialized services, and they need to be protocol aware at a fairly high level. And we need to verify that these systems, A, work, and B, are fast enough not to induce clipping. We want to also then use at uh, the, the SIP-specific threads for that. How do we detect such an attack? How do we mitigate attacks? And then how do, can we validate our uh, strategy uh, in that? 
and we also hopefully can generate some requirements for uh, future security elements. One of the problems, as a side note, is I, if you're in this business, you know there's a lot of snake oil being peddled in this particular space. Uh, there's a whole industry that seems to cater to security fears, uh, not all of which is grounded in either uh, reality or actually providing true defenses. So the, the basic problem overview here is that we have voice of IP traffic, uh, which is commingled, largely indistinguishable by looking at the packets. They all look like RTP packets. They all come from sources which you could be potentially talking to, since any IP phone on the planet could be a legitimate source. And we now need to have a, a packet level filter mechanism which uses a, a SIP level awareness to a steer and filter the good ones from the bad ones. In our architecture, we use a combination of two systems, namely a, a deep packet inspection uh, device, which we'll hear about a little bit more in, in a few minutes, and a standard SIP proxy, which happens to be in this particular experiment, uh, SIPD, which is a Columbia University programmable SIP proxy. It's not anything that's special to that, it just happens to be uh, more programmable than others, and so it was relatively well suited uh, to that particular task. We are then looking at a variety of SIP uh, level of threads and RTP level of threads. I initially, I said we primarily look at RTP. We're currently looking at the SIP level ones, namely uh, call hijacking. Uh, so the call hijacking threads are typically registration hijacking. Somebody sends a bogus registration, redirecting media to somewhere else. Uh, media session hijacking, say by redirection of existing session, and server masquerading uh, that use uh, somebody interposes their server, uh, let's say their gateway, into uh, the, the, the path uh, of the messages. Uh, then we have a spoofed message problem. Uh, in particular, one uh, big problem is fake call teardown. If you do not have a, a SIP level security mechanism, which unfortunately most systems do not implement today, uh, it is relatively easy for an attacker to send a fake buy request to your device and with a bit of guessing, you, again, depending on how good the implementation is, you can probably tear down an existing session. Uh, and or a faked response, so for example, you can pretend that uh, somebody is either somewhere else with a redirect response or that they are not available uh, at that particular location at all. Uh, to some extent, we could also be concerned about malformed requests that has not been uh, our focus right now although it falls out to some extent as almost a natural thing in the sense that malformed requests will most likely not set up a pinhole uh, at all so that will be implicitly filtered. And clearly denial of service, uh, request flooding uh, can be both on users as well as from other endpoints as well as flooding the call controller. We believe that implementation flaws are relatively easier to deal with. Just putting a uh, very robust but fairly dumb proxy in the path will generally do that. Uh, protocol and flooding attacks are much harder to defend against because they're legitimate. You can't just look at the syntax and decide that. Uh, we have uh, UDP flooding and TCP SYN type of flooding, but we are unaware that there is anything which allows us to deal with SIP level flooding. As I mentioned, uh, there are a variety of vulnerabilities uh, here uh, that we need to deal with. Uh, some of these the additional ones, for example, is error message flooding, where I routinely send hundreds of error messages to a particular destination, uh, or method vulnerabilities that I inject particular SIP methods, which may not be recognized or may have harmful effect, refers a particular example of that, where I can redirect um, kind of uh, sessions uh, from where they're supposed to be. So we have then two mitigation strategies, a media aware strategy, uh, which basically does dynamic pinhole filtering based on SIP requests, and a rule-based uh, detection mitigation for SIP itself. So what did we do with this? Uh, we implemented a large-scale SIP aware firewall, uh, where only signaled media channels can traverse that, and that protects the end system. We also then need to protect the SIP level. 
I, for the SEP level one, we are currently implementing a variety of tests. So that is ongoing work. So we don't have measurements for that yet. We have just an initial code. Uh, primarily the one which we are looking at is return routability checks to prevent spoofing. I, using the built-in SIP digest mechanism, SIP has a, a, the ability to do a, a digest authentication even if you don't have credentials, kind of null authentication, which gives you, even for UDP, return routability check. And a variety of rate limiting uh, mechanisms which allows you to rate limit based on transactions, on state machines and dialogues. So we have then thresholding mechanisms for these mes messages based on uh, statistical historical information what is what are legitimate. It is unclear to us since there is not fortunately a whole lot of statistical evidence yet as to what actual attacks look like in that particular space, as to whether we will be seeing basically an army of bots which send one request a day, which is very hard to detect, or the classical massive denial of service attacks uh, from a single source. Uh, we are currently focusing simply because that's the one which is statistically detectable on the ladder. And then I'll switch over just very briefly for the offer of the system who's been uh, doing the the uh, network processor module. You want to stand up? Sure. Hi, good morning. My name is uh, David Helms. Uh, part of the uh, aspects of this project uh, funded by Verizon was also using emerging DPAC inspection technologies for these types of applications. Uh, and I was the consulting engineer from Cloud Shield Technologies to implement um, the concepts and design as outlined by Columbia. So um, our implementation actually utilizes a combination of deep packet inspection technologies as well as um, application level technologies uh, based on the SIPD proxy from Columbia. Uh, we implement a, uh, a series of filters for a pinhole firewall uh, where we can do some static filtering and some simple standard firewall filtering um, of standard protocols. But the major uh, uh, design um, goal here was to also implement the, uh, an ability for a standard SIP proxy to signal to a very high-speed firewall so that pinholes can be opened up dynamically and closed dynamically for uh, RTP and RTCP connections so that we can respond dynamically to the media connections and allow them through. Um, the device that was used as the platform for this uh, particular uh, activity was the CloudShield CS2000. And what it allows us to do is actually combine um, application technologies uh, as well as our deep packet inspection technologies. Uh, the application server module listed here essentially think of as a control plane in which the SIPD proxy is operating and interacting with uh, SIP sessions and then using a customized protocol that was developed at Columbia and an API to our deep packet inspection engines, which are listed as the DPPMs here. We have two DPPMs that allow us to actually do the, um, the real-time filtering of traffic at very high data rates. Uh, looking inside the DPPM at its architecture, um, we use specific facilities that, um, that we're finding are optimized for the deep packet inspection uh, job. Uh, first of all, in the uh, data plane, what we have is a uh, multi-threaded parallel processor uh, that allows us to do multi-threaded parallel processing of the packets themselves. And along with other facilities, one including the protocol engines, which allows us to do very rapid packet classification. Um, the silicon database, which allows us to, if you think of it a, in a metaphor, as a very high-speed hardware-based uh, SQL database, so very, very close, uh, based upon CAMP technology, so the lookups are very quick, which when we're dealing the, with the hundreds of thousands of flows that we're talking about in this type of implementation is very important. Uh, we also utilized a uh, regular expression pattern matching engine which was critical for us to be able to um, actually scan the SIP application payloads and find the tokens of interest, uh, as, such as things as the call ID and various other tags inside the SIP application payload. And we use that in conjunction with the Silicon database to build an ongoing session state machine for all the SIP conversations, uh, which we use then to identify whether we have any state vi violations for a session uh, and to do any uh, uh, identification of uh, various call states for rate limiting as well. Uh, and then stream reassembly we use on a sporadic basis uh, basically to use uh, and to do fragment reassembly uh, when warranted in order to support this application. 
Um, what we did was we also built um, and designed a custom um, uh, protocol for the SIP D proxy to communicate with the D packet inspection directly. And so we built a custom API that integrates the SIP D proxy with the D packet inspection engine. And that was the actual implementation of this solution. Okay. Thank you. So I, I think we covered most of that. I, so the pinhole com components are static filtering, dynamic filtering, uh, when it is uh, necessary, and then uh, switching between the reports as necessary. So that's done in the data plane. And then the firewall control module intercepts with the setup messages and then needs to, within a, micro, within a few uh, milliseconds, to modify the configuration of the firewall uh, and both on the uh, setup part and the teardown part. So we have to essentially have a highly agile uh, firewall mechanism, which most existing systems do not offer. So we then had a test mechanism uh, to make sure that that actually all works. Uh, we needed to generate uh, on the order of a gigabit or so of data traffic to make sure uh, that we can handle the type of load that we wanted to support. I, we used our custom uh, SIP user agent test suite uh, to do that, uh, which just establishes thousands of calls a second uh, to that system, uh, does scanning probes, and then to make sure that that actually uh, the, the, the pinhole is open just as long as it needs to be open, and then had a timing analysis to make sure that the, the data is indeed uh, correct. That's the uh, device mechanism here. In addition, we use Snort as a traffic analyzer on, on the device. Test bed, uh, we used about a dozen or so machines on both sides to generate that type of call load. Uh, we needed to modify the call load, uh, generate the external load, and then run the, uh, the analysis uh, on that uh, using the closing and open delays as the primary metric. Uh, again, we're talking about not wanting to lose not more than one packet, preferably zero. That means we probably have between 10 and 20 milliseconds uh, to do that. And the results that we are looking at currently are, are where we have a concurrent calls uh, on the order of about uh, up to 30,000 concurrent calls that we support through the single device with about two to 300 simultaneous calls per second. And we have then an open delay uh, and a closed delay of, in the order of 0.8 or so packets uh, that we're looking at uh, in this particular environment. So we're barely but still within uh, our goals to, uh, to make that goal. So we can, uh, 30,000 concurrent calls is roughly what a large carrier would need to support. So uh, we have demonstrated uh, that there are indeed needs for protecting against SIP vulnerabilities in both media and signaling. We need to have this at a much larger scale than we can currently support with existing firewall technologies, and particularly to do this highly dynamically uh, because it has to be state-based. We need to validate that performance. I uh, cannot assume that it simply works. Indeed, we found in other systems that when we did the same test, uh, which I remain unnamed, that uh, this was indeed not the case, that we had problems, that uh, openings and, and closings were delayed significantly. And we need to, at this point, uh, we're looking at using the same type of methodology uh, to do weight limiting in particular for potentially malicious signaling in that. And with that, I'll gladly take questions. Any questions?